Hello and welcome to LimeTube. I'm your host, Lime, and this is my submission for the Delta Group Contest. Now, for most of my regular subscribers, I doubt you'll know what this is, so this is really more for the contest than for you. Anyway, before I begin, I would like to say that my scenario involves numerous changes, not one change in a timeline which led to this alternate world. These changes are listed roughly in chronological order. If an event, no matter how important, occurs in the same way in this alternate timeline as in our own timeline, I do not mention it. So... During the 17th century, more Spaniards moved to Latin America than in our timeline, especially to northern South America. Many more African slaves are brought to the Caribbean and to the American South during the 18th century than in our timeline, to the point where large portions of those regions have a majority black slave population. This population grows a desire to be free from white oppression, a desire which only grows over time. Japan conducts more trade with foreigners in the 17th and 18th centuries than in our timeline. This inspires it to end its isolationist policy and begin imperialism earlier than in our timeline, allowing Japan to slowly acquire Oceanian land over time. Portugal focuses more on South American colonization than in our timeline. This means that Brazil becomes larger and that Portugal invests little resources in the Indian Ocean and in Eastern Africa, so Portugal never gains any colonies in those regions. France never supports the Americans during the American Revolutionary War. This leads to an American loss in that war which would, for reasons I'll get to soon, later be known as the First American Revolutionary War. This also means that France is in less debt, delaying the French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars. Three Latin American groups fight to gain independence from Spain, the Argentinians, the Chileans, and the Andesians. Spain, preoccupied with the Napoleonic Wars, lets these groups go relatively peacefully, which, with each group getting a country. The more Spanish north of South America remains under Spanish control. Taking the British involvement in the Napoleonic Wars as an opportunity, many black slaves revolt against the British rule in the Second American Revolutionary War and try to get revenge against their white masters, many of whom flee to northern Mexico to escape black violence. In many northern British colonists, including some Canadians, also revolt against the British, the British make a deal with the Midwest Amerindian tribes, promising them their own country if they support the British. By the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1824, the British are so sick of fighting that they, are almost that they almost immediately agree to the Treaty of New York, the treaty which ends the Second American Revolutionary War. In the Treaty of New York, three new countries, the Indian State of North America, ISNA, the United States of North America, USNA, and the Negro Republic of America, NRA, are established. Canada remains mostly in British control. Some Americans from the USNA moved to the Oregon region in the hopes of spreading manifest destiny. But since the USNA isn't near Oregon, Oregon remains its own country. Several slave revolts occur throughout the Caribbean, usually supported by the NRA. Whenever these revolts happened, the new Caribbean country joined the NRA. Eventually, the NRA controlled the entire Caribbean. With nobody to sell it to, Russia keeps Alaska. To expand its colonial empire... France invades Mexico in 1869. After some initial French success, the war bogs down into a stalemate, with France controlling southern Mexico and Mexicans controlling northern Mexico. The war ends with the Treaty of Paris, leaving Mexico divided between north and south. The Francified South develops a different culture from the somewhat Americanized north. Though southern Mexico is eventually decolonized, Mexico never reunites. In 1880, Serbia and Bulgaria become tired of Ottoman rule and so revolt. The newly formed Italy 
takes this as an opportunity for expansion, and so joins the, the Serbs and Bulgarians. After seven years of intense fighting, the Ottoman Empire loses. In the ensuing Treaty of Cyprus, Serbia and Bulgaria gain independence, and Italy annexes Ottoman Malta, Cyprus, and Greece, and the Ottoman client state of Tunis. Upon Tsar Nicholas's Upon Tsar Nicholas II's ascension to the Russian throne, Russia begins a heavily expansionist policy. The most obvious outcome of this policy is Russia's unwarranted invasion of China in the Sino-Russian War. The Qing government in China, already severely weakened by the Opium Wars and the Taiping Rebellion, loses to Russia. This war is initially a huge victory for the Russian Empire as it annexes Chinese Xinjiang, Mongolia, Manchuria, and Tibet. But the war also heavily shifts international settlement against Russia. Under international pressure, Russia eventually cedes Tibet as an independent country. In the early 20th century, some Panamanian farmers learned how to grow bananas infused with cocaine. This addictive substance soon becomes an extremely lucrative global craze, and the Shakita Banana Company makes immense profits from it. Shakita Banana gets so powerful that it forms the Shakita Empire, conquering Central and Northern South America and buying the Yucatan Peninsula from Southern Mexico. The cocaine bananas would eventually become unprofitable and a revolution would end the Shakita Empire. Central America would remain united under the Republic of Central and South America. Following his annexation of the Congo, many European leaders see King Leopold II of Belgium as overly expansionist and so authorize a Dutch invasion of Belgium in 1909. The Netherlands then annexes Belgium and its Congo colony. In an unrelated event that same year, Luxembourg is partitioned between France, the Netherlands, and Germany. Some European leaders meet in Berlin to negotiate some small treaties regarding African colonies in the Second Berlin Conference. By the end of the meeting, Germany buys French Gabon, Britain, bri Britain buys French Benin, France buys the British Gambia, Spain buys French Morocco, and Italy buys British Somaliland and French Djibouti. Also unrelated to Africa, Japan buys French Indochina and the Spanish Philippines, and Britain buys German New Guinea. By the mid-1910s, Austria-Hungary is plagued by internal strife, a fact which Austria-Hungary's neighbors, Germany, Italy, Serbia, and Romania, take advantage of in the War of the Failed Empire. This combined force easily outnumbers that of the crumbling Austria-Hungary though the war's conclusion is delayed by the advent of trench warfare. This conflict is ended with the Treaty of Budapest. In that treaty, Austria-Hungary is dissolved, Germany annexes Austria, Italy annexes the Adriatic coast, Serbia and Romania each annex some land, and Hungary becomes an independent nation. Both Britain and France disapprove of this war, but, not wanting to anger any potential allies in a war with Russia, don't interfere in it. In 1919, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden each fear Russian and German expansionism, and so form the Second Colmar Union to protect each other. After Spain's failure to protect its Latin American colony from the Chiquita Empire, many people in that colony lose doubt in Spain, and so declare independence as the Republic of Northern South America. Spain, unable to retake its colony, allows the independence. In 1920, Britain buys the Wakhan Corridor from Afghanistan in order to build a military base on the Russia-Raj border. By the 1920s, oil's increasing value spurs a need to negotiate Arabia's borders, a need which is met by the Treaty of Baghdad. In the treaty, the Ottoman Empire is given most of Arabia, with southern Arabia going to the British Empire. So, those are all of my changes from our timeline. This is the world map circa 1930. I will end this video with a couple labeled maps of the world. So, um, please nominate this.
for being the best one. Peace out, Lime Gang.